to this other building and it's number 13. I was just telling my, my God. my monday technically it's tuesday because i'm back Can, you know canada let me through and i, I will talk a little yeah, bit about the trip but you know i haven't tied up the show i thought we'll go right into this aurora ufo crashing texas and then we'll go into some of the things about good old friends and sisters and brothers family whatever you want to call my canadian family up there i love the canada canadian it's always fun i can't believe they let me in but that's 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 a whole nother story so, you guys see the chat there, people in the chat? You got the wonderful Identify S4, the one and only. What's up, everybody? Beneath us. Now, he's not technically beneath us. He's equal, equally to us. But for this show, he's beneath us. I'm the bottom Ron. of the barrel. That's it. <laughs> Cosmic <laughs> Neighbors. So, I know we all, everybody's talked about our already UFO thing, but I got a couple of videos, and I want to get their true, honest opinion do we feel that this incident is real? We weren't there. You know, we weren't even born during the time of these incidents. But it doesn't mean we have an opinion of it or not. You know, so so I am going to share the first video. And, of course, I can't put it beneath because every time I put the videos beneath, guys, on StreamYard now, it seems like they all freeze up. So I'll just pull them up. Really? Yeah, seems like every time I do it, every time it, uh, Ron was there, like the last time I did. You update? I did you update your Mac to the new thirteen point one? Ah, uh, usually I always do, so I will have to double check. You have that. a new update? You should check, and maybe that's I'll why. Sure, you... I'll check that. This is eighteen ninety seven Aurora UFO encounter. So for those who don't know this uh, UFO story, Aurora, <laughs> Texas. Wise County, April 17th, 1897. An old West Cemetery that possibly holds one of the greatest unsolved mysteries in UFO history. That was one of the... Uh, one Before I continue, it says one of the, uh, of one of the most big stories of, of whatever. First of all, before I continue, Ron, is this one of the one of the like top ten stories in UFO history of crashes and sightings? Sorry, I had it on mute. Uh, yeah, the only thing is, is because it's 1897, like that. It goes back so long that everybody talks about Roswell. They don't even talk about Cape Girardeau or nothing, which was before it. But this is one of the most famous because it has the burial of a. Uh, an alien. Yeah. And, and we're, we're going to... Uh, in the private chat, just so later, you probably have it already. That's the newspaper clipping from 1897. Oh, in the private chat? Okay. Yeah. I, I will pull that up. So right now, guys, in the video, they're talking about 1897. Uh, a thing came from the sky, hit the windmill. Let's, let's hear more about it. We moved to Aurora. That was one of the first things that people said Aurora was known for is the uh, alien invasion of 1890 something, I believe. I can't remember actually when I was a uh, ninth grade student here at uh, Northwest High School. Um, I did a report on that and tried to do some research and went around and talked to some people in the community and uh, there's people that swear there was an alien there and he is buried in the Aurora Cemetery and obviously I, I can't confirm nor deny that but uh, I, I know there's some people around that uh, say they witnessed it. They, they, they swear that it happened. 
there was supposedly a uh, headstone uh, of the alien out there, and I know there's still to this day a historical marker, and um, it got stolen. And um, there's a bunch of conspiracy theories out there that the uh, FBI came and exhumed the body and took it to Area 51, and I don't know if any of that's true, but uh, but it makes for pretty interesting talk around the uh, around the coffee table sometimes. Okay, and then I do have a video of old interviews, like 70s, 80s, which is really, really cool. But before I play that, now, they say there was a body there, and there was, I like the picture, but it got stolen, I'm guessing. And they're saying they think the men in black stole it, or the, the, the military, or or if, if I believe, if people believe that there is an alien buried there with that, anybody could have stole it. Not just the military. I mean, we like a, a holy grail for our UFO, UFO, UFO theology, right? Right. You had the original headpiece there, but what is that story about? About the you know, alien, are people taking the alien bodies there? I mean, I mean, Anthony, is there anything to this story? I mean, what what is it about? I remember that it hit the windmill on the judge's property. That was a judge's property that this alleged UFO hit the windmill on and they buried it in the Aurora cemetery. I remember that. I remember many years later, I think it was the history channel went back to do an interview with somebody over there and they actually tried to uh, do some research around the general area to see if they could find any wreckage. But of course not. It wasn't there. It wasn't there some part of the story where they said they, they threw parts of the wreckage down an old well in this story, Ron. I think, yes, yeah, actually, yes. And the, the guy telling the story, his hands were all deformed, remember? And then they went and tested the water and everything, but it, it came back fine. Yeah, I always found it a little weird with the whole burying thing. I, I always yeah. thought the burying thing was, um, you got to remember, it wasn't really a big military thing like it is now. Yeah. You yeah. are talking, right? 1800s like that? Yep. But I... I, I don't know. I still feel that they said they put it there, but they didn't. They used it as a ruse or whatever. But that's just my, my own. Like, because you say to yourself, if something came from another world and crashed on ours, even back then, like, wouldn't the technology that was on that craft be important? Wouldn't they would wouldn't they want to try to secure the craft itself? That's why I don't think they didn't bury anything. I think they and took again, it, and put it somewhere. And, and again, you have to remember, we weren't Neanderthals or nothing back in eighteen ninety seven, but still. The, the technology really kicked in after 47, but even before that, we had the industrial stuff and everything. But 1897, they right. really, what we're still using horse and buggy. There may have been some prototypes of cars out there. There was nothing. The technology was at a, almost a bit minimum. Right. So seeing something like that, I don't know if that's where their thoughts were like, oh, technology is, that's just my opinion. Like that. They could have also thought that, you know, talking about an alien from another world was heresy too because they were crazy like that back then with religion and they could have exactly. just wanted to get it out of the, the eyes of the general public as fast yeah. as possible. Bury it. Let's not talk about it. Get rid of the yeah, evidence. It never a happened, I think. For it, I think. Yeah, a priest, yeah. an actual priest gave it its last rites as the story goes. I mean, and this is the newspaper. Um, Ron sent it to me to show you. This is like the original one that came out during that time. It says about, about six o'clock this morning, the early risers of Aurora were astonished at the sudden appearance of an airship, which has been sailing through the country. And you got to remember, 1897, we didn't have airplanes and stuff flying in the sky. Right. You know, so you could, so you, you could remove uh, uh, weather balloons. Uh, yeah, you can exactly. remove airplanes. You can remove drones from the drone. sky. <laughs> then it says... It was traveling due north and much nearer the earth than ever before. Eventually, some of the machinery was out of order, for it was making a speed of only 10 or 12 miles an hour and gratefully settling towards the earth. It sailed directly over the public square, and when it reached the north part of the town, collided with the tower of Judge Proctor's windmill, which Ron was saying earlier. And went to pieces with a, a terrific explosion, scattering debris over several acres of, gra of ground. 
wrecking the windmill and water tank and destroying the judge uh, flower garden. Now, I know a lot of people say, well, then where's all this wreckage? Like Rob was saying, this is 1897. This is like something new. This ain't something where you have show and tell. You know, uh, Not only that. You know, the Wright brothers didn't have the first aircraft up to like 1907, I think it was. So just imagine yeah. what a sighting this was to those people. They probably had no idea what was going on back then. What, you know what I mean? What some of the wreckage give the idea of them to make the plane for 1907. Very possible. If the story got out that far. You know, depending on the aerodynamics of it, maybe there's some map clues, you know. I mean, I, I'm not, you know, we don't know. But I, it think says, the, I think the best way they related it today, looks wise, was like to uh, a dirigible from like World War II, like an old blimp from World War II type shape. That's that's what it was alleged to have looked like. Maybe the yeah, yeah. That's what most it, of the depictions show. Also, and then it says the pilot of the ship is supposed to have been the only one on board, and while his remains are badly disfigured. Enough that the original has been picked up to show that he was not inhabitant of this world. Mr. T.J. Weems, the United States uh, signal service officer at this place and an authority on astronomy, give it all his opinion. He wanted the native of the planet, uh, of the planet Mars. We see here, paper found on his person. Eventually, the record of this travel written in some unknown hieroglyphics and cannot be deferred. This is, about, this is about the last part, guys. The ship was too badly wrecked to form any conclusion as its construction or uh, motive power. It was built of an unknown men uh, metal, resembling somewhat a mixture of aluminum and silver, and it must have weighed several tons. The town is full of people today who are viewing the wreck and uh, gathering specimens of the strange metal from the debris. So I'm guessing they, they still have some of this debris. I, you know, I, I don't know. I don't because know. Like they never showed it. People gather to, to see the strange metal <laughs> debris. You know, I was just looking up too because I'm thinking, what could it possibly have been aside from an alien craft? I'm thinking, could it have been a blimp, a zeppelin? But it says. Uh, when I looked at it, they were invented. The first one was in 1852, but that was in France. The first one to fly in the U.S. was the Goodyear 1925. See, this is way before that, man. Yeah. Way before that. So but now, when, when you look back in history, even Leonardo da Vinci had had schematics for things that hero. look like helicopters and things that look like flying crafts. So who knows if some some scientist of some kind was trying to mess around with old drawings and try to put something together and get it going. And it wasn't till you know, 1907 or 1910 or whatever till we first got one to stick in the air that actually worked. You know, maybe it was a failed test. That, that, see, yeah. That's where I was going with this. Like, although it says... <laughs> Sorry, I, I was just getting it ready. That's the wrong one anyway. That's okay, buddy. The first flight, although 1925, the only reason why I checked is Okay, so blimps were made 1852. That always leaves a possibility that they could have been making them, just testing them, or whatever, and something happened. That's always a, that's why you have to always look at the angle. Who can who can who can honestly say with a straight face that maybe the pilot of the tested craft was just a short guy or a short woman on the five foot and got burned so badly it looked like a disfigured alien, and that's what they assume because they never seen the craft before. And they jumped to conclusions back then. You know, we're talking yeah. 1800s here. Yeah. Well, we don't know. Now, like I said, people in the chat, this next video is old interviews. I mean, so this is like 70s, 80s. So the footage is going to be like watching something from the early 80s and 70s of the past. So just, cool. just telling everybody. It's about six minutes long. We'll pause it here and there. It's, it's called so Aurora, not, Texas hey, Space. So you know, because it doesn't yeah. show up on StreamYard. Uh, Long Island Bigfoot just became a member for nine months. Hey, congratulations! Oh, Mike. And I, Long Island Bigfoot did a uh, he did a, a show today, a real a real quick fast show on his channel, and I liked everything he said. So he did he did a, a good a good little clip today this morning. Up, yeah, yeah so he's not, awesome. And it's not and, showing up uh, on Streamyard for whatever reason. The it member does that. Yeah, yeah, it's just so. telling you how long they were a member for. That's all. Yeah. 
And I'm proud to say that Long Island Bigfoot Mike will be returning to the cartoon series. All right. Which I'm actually getting get getting it in two days. So sooner than we think. But here we go. If you're gonna break down, you're gonna break down in the middle of nowhere. You know, I'm not the only stranger this ever happened to. One day long ago, another stranger broke down here. It was April 19th, 1890. The only difference is he never lived to tell about it. A local news reporter gave the story to the Dallas Morning News, and it's been in and out of print ever since. Jim Mars of the Fort Worth Star-Telegram. Well, the newspaper clipping simply said that a cigar-shaped object, brightly illuminated, floated over a head in the early morning hours and crashed on the hillside. And then in the story, it said the pilot of the craft, comma, which was not of this earth, comma, was given a Christian burial in Aurora Cemetery. But one resident of Aurora since 1920, Miss Etta Pegas, considered an expert on the town's history, disagrees. I never heard of the spaceman. I moved to Aurora in 1920, and not one word did anybody ever mention about it. However, an eyewitness, 80... I'm going to go further for a second. So she moved in to 19... She said like 1920. Now, this happened in 1897, and I think the population is very small, so... I, w I wouldn't be surprised if you move into an area that nobody talks about something from 27 years ago. I I'm just, I'm not playing devil's advocate. I'm just playing that there's probably a good reason why she didn't heard about it. I and mean, we've got a small town. I would assume that would have been the biggest story that town ever had. Such a it small could be, town. but you know, there's a lot of small towns that people keep to themselves. True. You know, so I'm, I, 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 and I'm, I'm just saying, yay. I'm not saying yay or nay. I I'm just saying that just because one person, might not, you know, she might not be also the most friendliest person to talk to other people. I don't know. I'm just giving my two cents. It just, yep. you never know. Six-year-old Charlie Stevens claims when he was seven in 1897, he saw the crash. We don't want to trouble you too much about this because we know you're not feeling too well. Because of the years of harassment, he refused to appear on camera, but he did agree to talk to us. think you can tell me what you remember about the night that the light went over the house? There's been more people, more souls about that, but I see it with my own eyes and fell. But we went up there and seen the spot where it burned. Some people think it's a hoax. Well, it fell. It fell. It wouldn't be until the late 60s that the International UFO Bureau would uncover the story. Hayden Hughes, director of IUFOB. This is one of the... Before I go further with that, now they said in 1960 is when the, the UFO department, I guess whatever, finally like investigating or, or talking to the story. Ron or Anthony, is there any history of, of why it took 1960 or... Was that when they first put a certain group to start researching these sightings? Could have been when a, a team first got formed and caught wind of the story, thought it was interesting, and went to go investigate, you know? You know, and it was interesting that that guy, he's older, you know, saying that, like a lot of people nowadays still say they don't want to talk about their their what happened to them because they get, you know, looked down upon other people. That could be another reason why nobody talked to that one woman about it because people look at them as crazy. And then you got a, a new group moving in. Oh, yeah, by the way. Hey, Nate, by the way, I saw this spaceship crash about 25 years ago. You know, you know, I'm sure some people don't mind telling those stories, but I'm just saying. So I'm curious about this group right here from 1960. Like, I'm always curious. Why 1960? Why not sooner? What, who, did the president just decide to finally fund a group to start looking into this? Tell me this I guy don't look like Rudy. Remember the movie Rudy? <laughs> Rudy? Rudy, get back in there, Rudy. The <laughs> I love that suit, the brown, the, the red. <laughs> Controversial aspects of the incident. Were the news accounts at the time genuine? Tell me the truth. I got to pause it for a second because I love this. Terry Brown asked, can't you see Eric dressed just like that dude? <laughs> mm -hmm. I should. I should. With the cowboy should. hat. I should. I should. What do you think? Is there anything here? In 1973, when I came here first, there, there was at least a partial headstone here. I'll show you what I saw. There was only half of a 
tombstone, which went something like this. And on this was a very curious mark that went something like this. This was just a rock and that had been hand uh, hewed and, and uh, this had been chipped out of it with some kind of chisel or something. But as you can see, it's just a curious little object. But I think we could see if there was the other half was on here, we'd have what appeared to be a tombstone. And if you brought this mark to this side, you would have something like this, which gives you a definite saucer shape. What do you think this is? I think it's just a piece of fiction. Yeah, it keeps Wise County on the map. That's all I can say. <laughs> Keeping Wise County on the map is the reason Miss Etta and many others believe the spaceman's story was written. From what she told me, the gay 90s had not been kind to the little town of Aurora. They'd lost cotton to the boll weevil, half the business district in a fire, and hundreds of citizens to spotted fever. People left the town in droves. In those days, even a Martian wouldn't be caught dead in Aurora. <laughs> the general consensus of opinion is that he uh, wrote this story to bring people back in into the uh, community. See, the, it, that spotted fever caused a veritable stampede out of the town. Well, we were not dealing just with one case. All over, people were reporting something, and one of these somethings appears to have crashed. The crash site today is owned by Mrs. Brawley Oates, who gets calls in the middle of the night and thousands of visitors at her door. Uh, there sure has been a lot of them here. <laughs> what's her name? Uh, the Crowley? thing about it, they just pressed me for what's happening. Can you say something, Anthony? Was her name Mrs. Crowley? Is that what they said? Well, let's go back. Mrs. Crowley gets thousands of knocks on her door. Let's see. Let's see if this is Mr. Crowley. Maybe this is where... The one that's Bobby's Mrs. Crowley's, Crowley's mom's from. house. Let's see. Right today is owned by Mrs. Brawley Oates. <gasps> Brawley. 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 Brawley Oates. Oates. Okay. Darn, so close. We close, right? <laughs> where the song Frozzy came from. Darn it. <laughs> <laughs> Who gets calls in the middle of the night and thousands of visitors at her door. Uh, there sure has been a lot of them here. <laughs> uh, the thing about it, they just pressed me for what's happened here. And I, if there's anything happened here, I don't know about it. So. My grandkids went out there with a screen. I've one with screen doors and they sifted sand out there and they found little particles of metal. Lead looking metal, but it wasn't lead. Another clue leading to still more questions. I know one thing, you don't never die down. Just on and on, it's just like a mushroom. It just gets bigger and bigger and it just goes further and further all over the world. One man who has tried to keep the story from spreading any further is the sheriff of Aurora. Armed with a shotgun, he spent 24 hours a day guarding the graves in the cemetery from treasure hunters and curiosity seekers. And in return, all he got was an ulcer. Were well, you the one that, oh, you're the guy. Well, While I gassed up, had we had a few words. Yeah, you were up here with a shotgun? Very few. Do a lot of the town people here believe that there's a UFO up there? A lot of them did, a lot of them did. It's fair. Something fair. And they tell you it's hurting. Oh, it's hurting their lives. What do you think? Do you think they should get down here and dig it up and settle it once and for all? No. If we can find the exact grave and get the permission from the Aurora Cemetery Association to actually exhume bodies for evidence, that we could have the evidence of extraterrestrial visitation. Mr. Nobles, you represent the Aurora Cemetery Association. What's their position in this matter? They have a, a very uh, uh, definite objection to anybody going down there with pick and shovel and wanting to dig a hole. Why? Well, it's they're afraid somebody to dig up grandma. What's that? They shut you down. Oh, really? Yep. Can we come back on in three minutes? You got a minute, 20 seconds. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, you, you, they sh you played the video too long. Oh, man, this is only five. Oh, okay. Yeah, I told you, they're not fucking around. They're not fucking around YouTube anymore, bro. Telling you, they ain't fucking around. Wow. Oh, I even tested this, too. Doesn't matter. Well, that doesn't you matter. can't share another matter. person's stuff anymore, man. Yeah. I, I wasn't lying to you. No, 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 I said you were. I thought I was about to get away with this one. Well, I was when trying you to put it. something on your test account, 
is one thing, but when you're actually out live streaming it in real time, that's different. Yeah. Man. I'm waiting for it to come back on here. Yeah, I'll let you know. I got my laptop any second open. Now. Be I told him already. Any second. <laughs> what are you gonna you're right, yeah, they're they're even getting me a lot more a lot more sensitive. That guy from the channel even told me I could play it too. But you're right, it doesn't even matter no more. It doesn't even matter. Even with permission. And they don't I'm care. Telling you, you gotta start framing it, putting it smaller, and even the volume level has to come down some. It gotta change it. So many different things. And actually, and actually, oh, we're back on. Mm, yeah, and, now, and now actually, you are. I did my pad. I'm gonna start animating, doing everything myself. You're good now. <laughs> so actually, let's, let me let's talk about this. So so they talked about digging or, or want permission to dig, and of course they don't give permission. You know what? Is, what is the right thing to do in that case? I mean, if you're if you are in charge of the cemetery. You just don't want anybody just to dig up, especially when you weren't even during that time, 1897. But on the other end, is it wrong to to show science of it to see if there is truth to it? I mean, I mean you need to prove there's an alien there. You know, I mean, that's the biggest story. That would be the biggest find ever to prove extraterrestrial life elsewhere, right? And if there's a body buried there and it's really an extraterrestrial body, you would have to exhume to prove that. There's no way around it. You would need the body. Without a body, it's just a good story, man. And it shows you what people believe of it because think about it now. Why wouldn't people today in ufology be uh, like uh, petitioning to let's go exhume the body? Let's, let's go test this. Like nobody talks, touches it at all. That just shows you a lot of people probably just don't believe it. And Buck the System even wrote, you can't dig up graves. Because there is, I can see that because there's a lot of beliefs that you disturb somebody's Not, enough. not yeah, picking up people. It's not grave. a human. It's an alien. It's but not we don't, a human. Of course, of course in, in reality, you don't know that if it's human. You know, it could be yeah, a regular body. The only way you're going to find out is if you get permission to exhume the site. That's it. Point blank. If they're saying it's an alien buried right. there, then... What is a judge going to say like that? Yeah, because I, for a judge, you got to have some kind of evident proof of like a murder case or something and all that. And just somebody thinking it's an alien. The can't church, be proof enough. if a priest presided over the, um, the burial, maybe the church has like a plot location where, where it was laid to rest. So there's got, if look, if there's a real alien in the ground, somebody's got documentation somewhere and they know exactly where they put it. You know, so I'm not saying go dig up the whole graveyard look. And if somebody knows exactly where the, the site location is, you go have that exact site exhumed and that just that that site. Exactly. You would think they would know somebody knows exactly where that spot is. And they don't want that out because they don't want grave diggers and, you know, treasure hunters go out there and dig it up themselves. Right. Let's get it over with. You know, and our our other other way of thinking is if you're the government, if you think there's an alien, could they override everybody and say, you know what, we are going to dig it up? Who knows if they didn't go there and dig it up already? That's true you too. Know? We don't know that. So I mean, what how big is this town anyway of Aurora? Uh I'll tell you now. Oh, what state? Aurora what? Texas. And of all graveyards. You got to think twice if you're going to dig up a graveyard in Texas because everybody carries in Texas. <laughs> more, more, majority of more. 1,449 people as of 2021. It's a very small town. Very small town. People. Tiny. That's, that's nuts. But beyond the whole story, so let, let's break it down here. So, Anthony, what do you, what do you, everything you know about it, in your gut, what do you feel? Do you feel there's something true to this, something real to this? No, I don't. And real quick, Buck from Buck the System Podcast just sent me this. 
And this was flying around in that time period, okay? That blimp. And that it, that looks exactly like the craft that was on the first tombstone you showed when the show first started. So if I'm going to take an educated guess, I'm going to say this is what they seen. It was on fire and out of control, and it was coming down. It landed on the windmill. It blew up, and whatever passenger was on it got fried to a crisp, and that's what they buried. That That's what I think. So they did have a blimp. Yeah. In 1897. Yeah. I thought somebody like said it didn't come to like 1925 or something. Well, this was just sent in, and this was around uh, eight. Uh, this was flying around in the late 1800s. I was just told. So. If and that would make sense of all the metal. I mean, that's, it out. that's the exact shape that you saw on the very first tombstone. And and I'm sure back in those shit. shit I'm mean, shit now. I, I don't really see blimps. Now and, and 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 there are some they, there is a blimps that exist now. Think about 1897. You will never ever see a blimp. Well, they were just starting to come in. You know what I mean? They but were they just were starting to in create them. They were so, around. I mean, if the first one flew in 1925, I would think that they. I mean, I'm not saying it was a blimp, the but there is the possibility flew. it was being built. Prototype. It was already built in 1852 in France. Could be a prototype. You know, it's possible. I mean, that's why I always look to see what was available at that time. Like that. Because that you know it's not drones. You know what I mean? You know it's they didn't do weather balloons and all that stuff then or whatever. I'm sure they had balloons, but not not like where where balloons have metal pieces on them. Yeah. Drones, planes are out, obviously. Nineteen oh seven, the Wright brothers went up for the first time. Yeah, when they uh, made this, the first one was like made out of paper. You know, also so. wood and and, uh, and uh, some kind of uh, papyrus, papyrus or whatever. But uh, I, I just think, look, not that I don't want it to be an alien and a UFO. I just think it's a great, you know, story somebody came up with back then. You know, to make you the see town. what they said. You see what they said. Uh, one of the ladies, or one of them said, it's uh, it's always like it, the people come. Like I always think a lot of things are made as to bring people into the community, like they'll you know, bring money and everything. Because look at Roswell, right? Now I'm not saying I'm not saying Roswell's fake at all. I, I believe Roswell happened. But look at that there. You know, it's a big that's when you say that name Roswell, people think right away a UFO crash. And I'm talking outside of ufology. You know, around, what do you that, remember Maury Island? Maury Island, they sold what was it at, at, on one day, like 20 something thousand t shirts we were all joking about? Yeah, that alien encounter. So, I mean, so Rob, what do you truly think of the 1897 incident? Do you think it's real? I, I think, I think something happened. Um, the thing is, that whole burial thing. I, I I don't know about the burial part. I think the I always thought the burial part was kind of like a ruse or to throw people off. And again, because this isn't like they're I'm not talking old men in black. We're talking 1897. We still had intelligent people, but I don't know. I don't know. It's difficult to say. I, I I'm I'm split on it. I don't say yeah or no, yes or no. That's it right here, Eric. 1852, the floating boat. First powered airship. That's it right there. Because they said it was going like at 12 miles an hour or something like that. That was floating across the sky at 12 miles an hour. Now, do we know that they really do have metal pieces right now from that incident? Not that I don't believe so. Nobody, I didn't hear anybody say that. Because in the one video, uh, they're talking about people with they go see it, and I'm thinking, well, if they have it, then somebody should be able to compare it to that, to that bl or to that blimp. Yeah, they no. also said uh, when they when they had the funeral uh, was planned on April 20. Uh, papers found on his body after the crash contain writings and some unknown hieroglyphics, which according to him appear to record the pilot's travels. Mm. So when I'm reading this article online, it's saying that it had some papers on it. Okay, it listen to this. But, and it seemed to show like it was kind of like a map of his travels. 
In 1784, General Jean-Baptiste Marie Monsieur designed an elliptical airship that was about 260 feet, 79 meters long. It was to be powered by three hand crank propellers, which required the labor of 80 men. Monsieur's design was later built. So there's that also. And that was in 1784. I think, and I think the only other question I would have, if we think it's a blimp, you think there'd be some kind of report of one going down or they're no. missing one? No, not back then. Especially if, it's a back then, if you're missing something like that, you would think somebody would. The Wright brother, and... the Wright brothers crashed. I don't know how many of their aircraft before they got it fully off the ground and took first real long flight. True, and none of that. I mean, it was documented, you know, for, for so they can, you know, study their mistakes and everything. But nothing went to the, you know, like we do today. It wasn't like that back then, man. Yeah. I mean, it's, it is interesting. I mean, the only thing that throws me off is um, saying that where I say, oh, come on, give me a break. I just don't think a, 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 a priest or a minister who's ever above a grave is going to do it with the – well, thinking there might be an alien in there. Well, think think about this. You remember that first diorama I made, the Cape Girado? Mm -hmm. That was in Cape Girado, Missouri. Um, that's where the info came from because they actually called a pastor uh, to deliver at last rites. They went, the army went and picked him up at his house. He had no idea what he was going to, like what happened. And then he right. came upon this. Uh, you can look that up, the Cape Girado. I, I think I did a video on that, but yeah, and they had him a minister of last rites, and he ended up telling his, um, he told his daughters and everything that one time like that, and then never spoke about it again. But right. and this was an upstanding person, so they did back then, like like there's still today there's religion, but back in the early uh, parts of the 20th century and 21st century, like religion was like. Everything. Up and focus right, right there. You know what I mean? And not only that, seriously. Uh, Kat said the lady said her grandkids sifted the dirt and found metal. Yeah, but nobody tested the metal. I can go in my backyard right now with a screen and sift and I can find metal too. You, have to, you have to test it to make I sure heard. metals are, you know, they were made on world or off world. And we could do that now with a spectrometer. Back then you couldn't do that. So any metal they found. And that's it. Thing. There's so many of these cases we hear that there's crashes and and there's miles of wreckage or this and that. And Where we is never it? even see a, a speck, piece, like a smallest piece of nothing. Yeah, because you, you only need one speck to do some testing on it. God, I would love to. Are you kidding me? I would love to walk up on uh, on the Roswell site and find something, you know, conclusive. You know, who wouldn't? You know, be a game changer. But it just uh, it hasn't happened in the civilian world yet. Maybe military, but but no civilians found anything yet. Uh, what did Terry Brown say here? There was a tremendous amount of airships reports during the period of time back then. The dates and actual places escapes me, but many people witnessed them. Yep. Okay. Uh, power flight happened so quick after the Wright brothers. Only 40 years then, first flight to the first, first jet. jet. WW2. Still yeah. <laughs> How I win the lottery he said, let's take a field trip. I'm with you, brother. Let's go. Way to be. Yeah. I mean, I guess it'd be a fun, take a little field trip. But of course, they, the History Channel took, I think Bill Burns went there and his team. And they, they dug up the well where debris was alleged to have gone down. And the guy that lived there took them right to the spot where the material was allegedly dropped in the well and they found nothing. But anything sitting in a well for 100 years is going to deteriorate into nothing. It's going to just rot away. They, they made that movie uh, called The Aurora Incident in 86. Um, Hudson Valley coincidence. That's right, bro. The or Aurora Encounter. Hey, look, man. See, I want to find material and proof to the world that it's legit because I had a sighting myself. I had that encounter that blew my mind, right? And I think it would bring more validity to my story and every experience's story. Ron, Angel Wings, everybody that had an experience like that, right? If we could just find one piece of, of material that's from off-world, that's it. 
Yep. Game Aurora World. Encounter. Sorry, I was trying to make it bigger so people could see that. Who posted? Was that from the 70s? 86. 86. It does There's look like documentaries about picture. it and all that. So I don't remember that movie. Yeah. Kind of reminds me of when Disney did like the cat from outer space or you know, which mountain <laughs> posted. That's cool. I don't out. think yeah. I ever watched that movie. Yeah. I I'll see if I can find it. If Love I can, you. I'll send it to you. That is that is interesting. Well, guys, over the weekend, people, mm. guys, you know, I went to another country. Well, I don't really call it another country. They're my neighbors and brothers. Canada's my brother. You went to Canada, eh? I don't, I don't consider Canada another country. Did they, did they first should have speak in English and in French? There was a lot of people talking French up there. It's, believe it or not, I was like, wow. Because of French Vancouver Canada. Island. There's Vancouver, which is considered the west coast of of Canada. Like, like, like Vancouver is their Hollywood of all Canada. But now it was Beautiful, on Vancouver right? Island. Where Victoria is the uh, their capital, that's okay. the, the capital of the country. How beautiful! And there, there, there's, there's people say that there's a Bigfoot on this. Um, let me see here. Wrong one. That's a wrong one. Let me get that out. Hold on a second. I got the wrong. Cause I got pictures. I got pictures here. Let me see. Chrome. Is it? This one, it was this one. Here we go. Go. So these are like the that, that's like the woods that's on this island. So when people say there's no Bigfoot on the island, listen, they they're so that the whole island is almost mountain. It's a perfect habitat. That's beautiful, man. It's perfect habitat for Bigfoot. Now, unfortunately, um, of my research, walking around and stuff. No noise, no nothing, no, no, you know, no, no, where I, I think of any evidence that I think there was a, you know, Bigfoot, but the country of this backwoods is just, it's just beautiful. I mean, that is beautiful. There's still parts of wow. the forest, like, you know, where the redwoods are, they're still finding some that they haven't seen before. Like, there's parts of it's so dense that we haven't even been through every part of that. It hasn't oh, been fully oh, explored. Oh. It's wild. And just curse, oh, man. I just take some shots, and like I said, and you know, there's no. Um, unfortunately, the tree trunk, the bark, it's thirty feet wide. That's the That's diameter. So wild, man. Thirty feet wide, three hundred and seventy-nine feet tall. What is that standing behind you, Eric? What's that standing behind me? Yeah, behind that tree. Look on the left side of that tree. Looks like you have antlers. Oh, it's a bark. It's Mark. <laughs> a lot of people when I when I travel, I, I, I do a little thing when I travel, people. When I travel, I shave on purpose because in my mind, yeah. if I get stranded, if I get, I don't know, stuck somewhere, growing the beard kind of tells me how many days I've been there. <laughs> I really do this. It's true. It's true. I'll shave just in case, worst case scenario. If somebody asks me how long, I kind of know how long it takes me. To, to I've been here four back. days. I got about four days worth uh, of stuff on it. So it's my map. So <laughs> it's true. That's why I do oh, it. God. And then, and then, um, let me see here. I got some other, let me see here. Oh, hold on. I got a, 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 an email from, from uh, YouTube about that stream. I just did due to copyright match. Your stream was interrupted. <laughs> okay. My bad. They're not, they're not messing around anymore. Okay. Now, I became a real Canadian. Oh, boy. Once I went into a store that says real Canadian superstore. <laughs> <laughs> and now you're so, a real Canadian. So, so, I guess that made me a real Canadian. Nice. Going into a Canadian store, I, you know, because they don't let, they don't want Americans in their store. They don't want real Canadians. Nobody real said anything Canadian. to me. So, I guess I became A. You're Canadian. Okay, Let me see here. Uh, this is the capital at night. Beautiful. And this is light up all year round at night. That's their capital. And this is a, a supposed to be a famous castle. I, I forgot the name of it. I forgot, damn it. I forgot the goddamn name of this castle. Beautiful. Hogwarts. Hogwarts. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Hogwarts. Hogwarts, probably. Yeah. And then, and of course, I found that. 
You found a woolly mammoth. I found a woolly mammoth, so I didn't find Bigfoot, but I found a woolly mammoth. <laughs> <laughs> and then, nice. let's see. Of course, that's, wow, that's, from the, that's from the ship when we're taking off at night. And then, let me see here. Where I think I got, uh, uh, is it? No, not that one. Maybe, maybe it's these here. These are seal. oh, seals. Oh, nice. Now, now I, sent the picture, I sent the picture to um, um, Anthony. Anthony goes, what the fuck is that? And the I didn't realize. One. The like, other oh, picture. It looked like John in a hut. And I'll, I'll show you the picture that I sent him. I sent him. Hold on. Where is it? That one. It does look like John in a hut. <laughs> it's a whole <laughs> I didn't know what it was. It does. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck is this thing? That's funny. Now so I see what it is. So that that's a seal, and I'm gonna tell you a little, I'm gonna tell you a little story about this for a second. Hey, you okay. a man, what's up, Tim? Okay, now hopefully this is not what uh, Amber Paraworld and Nona Boss was talking about, where something nice is supposed to happen to me. If that's nice, damn it, I want something bigger. <laughs> okay, when we booked our, our ship, if you look at the map, we have we picked these two seats, not knowing these two seats were technically in reverse. Facing other people. My wife did not want that. Hell no. We right. want our own seats. Now, the uh, boat was only half full. We we moved to where it's just us two. But on the way back, and he said on the way back, you can do the same thing. So on the way back, we went to the counter. And, and we go, hey, we want to uh, change our seats. And the lady goes, actually, we're looking for you two. I'm like, uh-oh. Here we go. I'm an American. They're gonna they're gonna bust me back to Canada. Oh, well, the lady you're sitting there has a kid. He's kind of wild. So we want to move you to first class. Nice. Like, whoa, really? First class? Are you serious? I, yeah. I was willing to pay to get better seats because my wife don't want to sit. Because the boat in, in reverse, you're seeing reverse. Yeah. I not want to sit reverse. Yeah. But it didn't show that on the map when you picked out your seats. So with first class, we got all the uh, free, uh, um, you I mean, know, free coffee, whatever you want. But then, then this one my wife told me, guys. She goes, you, um, "I got to tell you that first class is not made for you because they don't, they don't, because because certain people who take first class don't really t take all their coffee and drinks or chips and stuff. And I'm up there getting free coffee and all that. <laughs> so she goes, technically, you know, first You're class. Living it up. I'm like, what? What do you mean first class is not made for me? Come Looking on. Up, man. People like you is what they don't want. Been like, no champagne? What, what kind of first class is this? <laughs> <laughs> my so, peanuts. You know, so I'm like, okay. So what is first class? But there are, this is, you know, it's cool to see differences of all the countries, even though we're so connected, because I always, I always, I always observe everything, even radio stations. For example, you put on classic rock in America, most of the time, 80% of the time, you're going to hear top 40 songs. But I swear to you, in Canada, they play mostly deep tracks. It, it's weird. It's weird that they don't necessarily like care as much as top 40. Like, what I mean by top 40 is like... I know what you mean by top 40, but what, like, what, what were they playing in Canada? What do you mean deep like, tracks? They would play, they would play, you know... Led Zeppelin and of course um um Black Sabbath so but they would play like the songs that don't have a video. Other uh, songs are, are usually their like ones that aren't uh, that famous. Every album have like four top songs, they have videos and stuff. Gotcha. They were playing like like Aerosmith, like stuff that they're they're not top forty. Right. And not once in a while, almost our whole channel was like it was just like interesting. Weird, just, yeah, I love it. Mm. Now it's different. Now, um, there was a place called Rogers here. Um, um, let me see here. Where is it? Buck okay. said that we'll move him to the bedroom closet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, why can't I shrink this? I'm, I'm trying to shrink this. Rogers. Oh, shoot. Shoot. Did I mess up? It looks good like that. Why well, you want to shrink it? Oh, no. What I mean is, ah, oh, shoot. Card, um. I, I, where is somehow? Oh, hold on. I accidentally. Okay, so so this place here, six spots to get spooked in Canada's top Halloween destinations. 
Okay. So there's a place called Rogers Chocolate Store. Okay. I, I went there. This is Rogers Chocolate. I wanted to see it. And according to the story here, uh, follow the sweet scent of freshly made chocolate to the Rogers Chocolate. Art Norris's uh, storefront on the Government Street to buy uh, Victoria Cream Seek, a uh, little ghostly activity. Charles and Leah Rogers first made their famous creamy uh, confections in the back of the historic store, often sleeping in the kitchen, had apparently have never left. And Pelosi's claim Leah regularly uh, the display is that Charles, Charles tossed milk chocolate on the floor which he loathed and were not produced by the company until after his death. Be sure to pay close attention to the mirror above the door as a child. So basically the story goes is, is that the man who made his, made his candy did not use milk chocolate. And then when he died, the family started using milk chocolate. And he hates milk chocolate so much that the story goes that he throws milk chocolates. So I went in there and I talked to the lady, very nice lady. This, you know, she didn't want me to record it, which I, you know, they're private people, I guess, doesn't matter. And I asked her, so, so, can you tell me the ghost side? Have, have, have you ever seen chocolate get thrown out or anything in the mirror? And she worked there. She says she's been there for 15, 20 years. She goes, ah, it's just a nice story. Yeah. That's what she told me. That's yeah. what she told me. She told me it's just a nice story. So, you know, so some of these stories, I'm not trying to debunk the story of this guy doing it, but this work lady's been there for like 50, 20 years, and she told me that no, nothing's ever happened. That's you know, and of course, this is the Rogers. That's the chocolate. Is it good? It's it's actually you know I, I I quit eating like 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 chocolate before the trip. I decided to eat a piece of chocolate and good and that's good. Is that dark chocolate? It, it it's good. But unfortunately, dark and milk. Ron wants to know this one is is milk because um, and dark. I can only have dark once in a while. Me dark too. is a is a certain taste. It's a bitter for me. I say you like dark. If you chocolate. want love in the night. You're supposed to eat some dark chocolate. You like no. dark, Ron? But yeah, I, I like I like both. But I usually eat dark chocolate. Mm -hmm. You know what's funny, right? As soon as I grab this. As soon as I grab this, I'm going to show you something. As soon as I grab that chocolate, look who came yeah. up. Don't give the dog no chocolate. I yeah. know. I know. This dog is like, look at her. She's looking at that chocolate. I seen her playing tug of war with your other dog. Look at her. And all that. He has a corgi too, Ron. Does he? No. Yeah. The, the, the corgi. Oh, the little legs. They got the yeah. Legs. Like the queen's dogs. The corgi is actually my son's dog, and and uh, they went away somewhere. So I had their dogs, and they were doing a little tug of war. Let me go to here, TikTok. I mean, I, I made a few TikTok, you know. small. All right, everybody. If you're watching me, I'm on the Clipper. I'm going to Canada. Today's Friday the 13th, and uh, hopefully. I don't fall in the water. Hopefully I don't drown. Hopefully I make this stuff. I didn't fall in the water last time. Might as well. So thank God, Ron. Uh, we were talking on Thursday that Friday the 13th did not happen to me. So that's the good news, Ron. You see, I'm here today. Nothing, nothing happened to me. Right. And then let me see. Is anything interesting here? What's this here? There it is. There's the dog fight right oh, there. Oh. The tug of war. I, hold on. I did a taste test. Because if you talk to any Canadian... They always talk about Tim Horton. Tim oh, Horton. Gonna suck. No, uh, uh, and all that. Now, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna play this, and then I'm gonna have to come out and be honest with you guys for a second. Hold on. I am going to take the Tim Horton donut test. I watch a lot of good YouTube channels. Some of my friends on YouTube are from Canada. They said Tim Horton donuts are the best. Let's find out. Um, you don't look it's happy. Good. It's good. <laughs> it's on the level of Dunkin' Donuts. I like it. It's got a nice little syrup taste to it, so it's good. Now, now I, gotta, I gotta tell you guys something right there. Uh, 
the honest truth I wanted to say, this is a piece of crap. But my <laughs> wife goes, don't say anything bad. <laughs> don't say anything negative. You know? right. you know? So I said, okay, Dunkin' Donuts. But, but I mean, Dunkin' Donuts is nice too, but it's not like a donut bakery. You go to those homemade ones. You know? But everybody, everybody talking about Tim Hortons. I'm like, huh. you know, there's nothing special. You got to go check out a gourmet donut shop one time, man. That, those are the spots, man. Like Duck Go, really good. Can you put the dog fight on for a second? Yeah, please? show them the call. Everybody's and, waiting and, and for the dog fight. Oh, you guys want to see the dog fight? The tug of war. Okay, the tug of war. Okay. And we... okay Place your bets. Place your bets. All right. We got so, a bull dog and a corgi. Okay. So, so I call this video English Bulldog has the high ground over the corgi. Because you remember Star Wars, Obi-Wan Kenobi had the high ground, so that automatically means he was going to win, right? The high ground. Yeah. So this is my dog versus the corgi. Here we go. Oh, 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 oh. Go get it. Oh, you guys. I'm going to pause, pause for a second. Now, if you guys look at the, if you guys look at my carpet or the rug, the rug is Star Wars. <laughs> there's spaceships on 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 the rug. If anybody wants to know, there's Star Wars. And these guys see that box that's on there. My son yeah. has had a cat over, and the cat likes to lay in the box. Do you have a Star Wars blankie? Yeah. Do you have Star Wars pajamas? Maybe. Got your a little Star Wars onesie. <laughs> Eliza, you're too slow. You're the Kogi one. Here we go. Go get Eliza. What's the Kogi's name? Toby. Oh, there we go. Tug of war. There we go. Doggy tug of war. Doggy, come on. Come on. Come on. Take it. Take it. Who's going to win? Who's going to win? The Kogi or the English Bulldog. Who's going to win? Here we go. Uh, 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 who's gonna go first? Who's gonna let go first? <laughs> who's gonna get tired? Uh, who's gonna get tired? Oh, jumping on the high ground. Got the high ground. He's got the high ground. Oh, the corgi's digging in though. Look at oh, that. yeah. Why is it like screw this? Take it. That's the lowest center of gravity. <laughs> Take it. You win. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> The English Bulldog won. I'm sorry, sorry, the Corgi won. Corgi won. The English Kobe Bulldog won. Kenobi won. Kenobi. And uh, he's still looking for the candy. He's still looking for the candy. So I guess the high ground doesn't automatically mean you're going to win. <laughs> no. Thank you. you guys in New York, you guys ever uh, go up to your parts of Canada, to Toronto area? I've been there a few times. Probably, when I was a kid. I probably spent a total of a month there. Not recently. Yeah. You know, I'm going to, this is going to be weird for some people. <laughs> so don't get me wrong on this one. Anybody who's been to um, a cannabis store in America, I don't know about all states. Uh, in Washington, there's a cannabis store. My, my brother used to go there, you know, that. And, and the cannabis store in America, they always got this big, huge security guard. Looks like they're ready to whip your butt, right? They kick, you know, they're, they they take your ID, they scan it. In Canada, where we're at, they, down the two blocks, there's a cannabis store. You walk by it, right? You won't even know it. It was the most cleanest thing I've ever seen of a cannabis store. I saw three workers behind of a thing. They had these big three TV screens, so I decided to walk in to talk to them. I, I don't I do not do marijuana, people. I, just, I don't care for it, but I was curious. I walked in. They had no security guard, no nothing. Oh, you're cased in a joint. And, 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 and I went in. I, I was curious. <laughs> and, and, you, and you go to this. You go to this table thing. They have this computer electronically of every type of marijuana they have there, like a selected screen, and you pick. And I saw a person buying. They don't check IDs. There's no security guy. And I'm sitting there thinking. God damn it, America! There's there's really? security guards. They, they they scan your ID and. I was like, wow, does Canada just... With the cowboy hat, they thought you were the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. That's why they played nice. <laughs> no, it's just... It's just like, like, great, said, comes the cop is. It's just a few little differences. I mean, there, there is a lot of differences. I mean, 
If you guys go to downtown Seattle, I, I bet you it's like this almost every city. You got food places near the hot spots, right? And a lot of times, all because the food's down there, you think the food's supposed to be good, but it's really not. They really buy cheaper foods because they know they got so many people that come in and out. But almost every spot that I go to in the downtown Victoria, the food's great. It's, yeah. like, it's like they take more pride and making their food than here in America in cities because they, they know there's more people anyway. They don't need to buy high quality. I'm not saying every place is like that, but you know what I meant? Yeah, it's like it's like restaurants kind of go fast food themselves. But it seems like in Canada, they don't go fast food. They, you really get a damn good burger or, or good chicken and all that. So just some of the differences that I've seen. You know, and they, a lot of them do keep to themselves, really. I, I try to ask a couple, like, do you believe in Bigfoot or anything? And they're just like, no, I yeah, don't. they're out there. That's about it. That's as far as, as they go. It doesn't seem like I can really get conversations with people with UFOs. It's really only America that's really, you know, into it when it comes down to it. Maybe Mexico with the UFOs, but America is really, you know, you hear people from London saying, ah, you Americans always talking about the UFOs and the ghosts and the cryptos. They're just but, mad because it's always cloudy there. Yeah, I think they're mad because we got the best stuff. But what are you going to do? What is Brown Dwarf asking here? Eric, did you try the protein face blue question mark? Hmm. I don't know what that is. I guess I didn't. <laughs> Uh, I, I guess I did it. No, that. I guess that's a, a, a different weed. It could maybe. It could be. I mean, they. You know, I, I was amazed. But you know, and the main reason why I went on this trip is, uh, you know, it was fifty percent off because it was like the last part of the year. And of course, with Ron, we learned that on Friday thirteenth, uh, uh, the, the 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 industry actually loses eight to nine hundred million dollars of less revenue of the traveling day on Friday the 13th because a lot of people in the world don't travel on that day. Really? Yeah, we did on the show. We did on, on the show on Thursday. It, was, it wasn't it was $10 million, It wasn't $30 million, 800 to $900 million less. Big people million. travel less on Friday. And think about it. My trip was on Friday the 13th, and that trip was 50% off. That's awesome. That's, that's good to know. I didn't – so – so anybody, so guys, when a Friday 13 comes up, you might want to check plane flights that day or trains or whatever. It might be cheaper because they have less people traveling on those days. Good to know. A little tip. Well, right before we end, we're going to uh, end the show soon. I want to know what's going to be happening on, on uh, Anthony and Ron's channel. But let me pop up Anthony's channel first, and we'll see what's going on with Anthony first. And then we'll go to Ron's channel. So let me get here. Let me share the screen to Anthony's channel. And we'll see what's going on with this channel. All right. I got your channel up. I see here that you have a show tomorrow. And mm -hmm. it looks like it's uh, Top Secret Lies. Yeah. Corey Good, Emery Smith, David Wilcock. Uh, they made me take it down. So I had to revamp it because a lot of people were pissed that it was off YouTube. So I'm, I'm going to do a... Uh, it a little bit different tomorrow and we'll go through because people still have questions. As you can see, there's somebody excited for tomorrow's show already in the chat. What do you so, mean you gotta take the thumbnail? Like, YouTube, the thumbnail YouTube right recommended that I took down like I had to take down like 26 friggin' videos. And uh, a lot of them were on the scams and everything, and people got aggravated that I took them down. So I'm putting them back up mm. but to YouTube standards. You know what I mean? So mm. I oh, okay, I got it. I got it. And this is tomorrow, tomorrow 9, 9 a.m. Pacific time, tw uh, 12 o'clock East Coast time. Right. And then let's go to Cosmic Neighbors. The Jim Goodall right there. So when is uh, this one? Put my little thumbs up. So this one is episode 16. Now, when you say episode 16, Ron, this is because this show is with him, like the 16th show with him, or... Since I, since I started it, that's this, like I do it every Wednesday, so... Episode 16. Jim was with me from the beginning, starting Space Talk, so that's the 16th episode. 
Yeah. And there was probably a couple of weeks. Um, I think there's, yeah, I think it's 16. I, I, there may be one extra that I didn't label, but that's it. I think we're going to probably talk about the F-35, the Raptor and stuff like that. I want to ask Jim a couple of things. Eric, you got to get Buck a cowboy hat, bro. Well, well, Buck says he needs a cowboy hat. There and, you go. Uh, I got, I got a few here. Hook them up. Got my, got my good brown one. Okay, Can't have that one. The New York Yankees emblem on got, it. Got my original black one. This one's more of a, a harder shell. Oh, that's that's, that's the uh, one you wear with the chaps, right? Yeah, that's now, the one you wear with the. This is not really out of your pants. This is not really a cowboy hat. This is actually a Indiana Jones hat. Any of them? Yeah, you're, you're ready to go. Yeah. So. So you got to get one with dreadlocks sewn in it. <laughs> <laughs> and all that. So first of all, I want to say I want to thank everybody for showing up today. And uh, you know, it's always fun talking about some of these famous uh, sightings, get everybody's opinions about it. And the truth of the matter is, you know, it's all speculations anyway. Everything, true, false, what's real and what's not. Unless we were born there, right? You know, we've seen it firsthand. We really, truly don't know what it, what's going on, if it's real or fake, because we're not there. But everybody you know, but, has a right to their own opinions or whatever they, you know. Oh, everybody does. It comes yeah. down to, at the end of the day, it's a belief system. It has you no know, belief, yeah. unless you're there, yeah. you know. Oh, I, 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 want to say I forgot to mention. They could say that. Yeah. I forgot to mention. I don't know if this is big news for anybody. I don't know. But we all know in the past I went to Queen Mary, nothing, no ghost sightings, no no sounds, no anything. So for me, Queen Mary is not haunted. For me, now some people say Eric, it really is haunted. It's haunted. Trust me, it is haunted. I have well, to go get you, you off the bus. I'm sorry, guys. I got to dip out. No problem. All right. In April, in April, I am going back to Queen Mary. I am uh, I. On April, I actually going to be staying there on April Fools. <laughs> of all days, on April first. Oh, wait, how long were you on the Queen Mary? How long? Uh, I was there for uh, just two days. That's what I mean. Me personally, I wouldn't. This is me speaking about myself. If I was on for two days, I wouldn't say nah, It doesn't look haunted because it depends. Did you do an investigation no. for two days, or were you just yeah. there on? A, no, no, we uh, I, I, mean, I have two videos on this channel way back on uh, one of my early days where I did a best. I, I walked around with my son, and then my daughter. And now I'm just saying it, nothing was haunted for me while I was there. Nothing was haunted for me. So for me, it's not haunted because nothing had haunted me. Doesn't mean it's not haunted for other people or, you know, luck of the draw. But for, for me, nothing happened now. But I'm going back. I'm going back. And this time, you know, maybe I'll have Amber's Parable on the phone with me, a medium. Maybe I'll talk to Nicole, too. Maybe I'll get a couple of mediums on the phone with did you. Me have a multi, did you have a, 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 a Amida, anything like that? Anything? Did you have any equipment with you when you were walking through that time? The only thing I had was an EVP digital recorder. Gotcha. And, of course, my phone filming, of course. Because let me go. Hold on a second real quick. Yeah, let me, I'm just popping this up for a second. Um, let me see here. Maybe oh YouTube. Maybe I go. Maybe I go here. Uh, go to content. Um, let me go to. I mean this. I mean this kind of takes me way back. I mean way back. Uh, I, I weigh a lot more too back in those days. <laughs> right here, right here. Uh, if you go way back, this is uh, god damn. I, I don't even, I don't even remember. Here, I have the Queen Mary investigation. What year? What what year was that? I put this up. God, November tenth, two thousand nineteen. Wow, memories, huh? And then. And of course, right. we are about to board this ship. That's where we board. And of course, um, 
we're on top of the <laughs> but it was just fun it was just fun I, I, i'm gonna end the show people but you know i i did investigate queen mary and i'm gonna go back and i'm gonna see maybe maybe this time will be the magic trip maybe this will be it i hope so i wanted to be but beyond that everybody have a great day and we'll see you all tomorrow on uh on Identify S4 channel. Take care. See ya.